Thanks for checking out Symphony on YouTube. Please be sure to subscribe and like our videos for updates. Let's look at the body quality as it were. Mm. Uh, challenges everywhere. Uh, many groups are talking. Sub-national sub organizations springing up. The Southern Governors Forum, Northern Governors Forum, uh, Southwest Governors Forum, PDP Gov groups are emerging, weighing in on national issues. And recently, uh, a group of eminent Nigerians comprising of uh, former uh, heads of state, <coughs> so Basan Joseph Abdullah Abdul Salami Abubakar, who turned 79 uh, a few days ago, uh, we also saw uh, leading traditional rulers uh, converge on Abuja to also weigh in on national issues. We understand you're part of this group. Uh, we're told that by Obasanjo himself that uh, the communique will be presented to uh, President Buhari and it's only after that that it will be made public. But Nigerians are eager to under, you know uh, what is actually happening, uh, what's the motive behind this group coming together <laughs> and what does he intend to achieve? <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, this is not, <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> no, well, first of all, I, I'm, not, uh, I'm, not an, I'm not a former head of state, I'm not a former vice president, I'm not a former chief of uh, army staff, I'm not a, I don't fall into any, I'm not an eminent traditional ruler. But you're linked uh, with so that group. <laughs> well, so, um, okay, so I just had the privilege of, um, you know, uh, providing uh, support that was required uh, to make sure that uh, the engagement uh, by these individuals uh, took place uh, smoothly. Uh, that was just uh, the extent uh, of my role um, in that uh, respect. But um, I, I also believe that I think last Friday, President Obasanjo, I think, um, uh, did issue, did interact with the press, mm -hmm. and I think he um, mentioned that, yes, such a meeting took place, and it was about, you know, the state of the nation and um, a strong commitment to uh, uh, mitigating the... Um, the centrifugal forces that were pulling in different directions and to, you know, that's really what it was. So one will welcome uh, any intervention at this point in time. The president needs a whole lot of advice, uh, policy, alternatives to work with in a challenging environment we have found ourselves in. No, absolutely, and I believe that um, the eminent uh, individuals that you referred to are very, very well placed to having, you know, on the b b based on the, with the benefit of experience, mm -hmm. um, um, they are very well. They are very well placed to really support the president in his ongoing efforts to uh, really restore order um, in the country. Well, when I saw that uh, group of eminent Nigerians gather, I tried to link it to what the presidency said, or even the DSS uh, said at some point that some Nigerians, some, some former leaders, who want to gather, uh, pass a vote of no confidence on uh, the president and. I encourage the people to topple, topple the government. I hope th they're not referring to that group. <laughs> well, I do not know. I don't work for the SSS. I don't know who they were referring to. Um, but clearly, you are aware that a meeting took place. Mm. And uh, it took place in Abuja. And uh, it was very well attended, uh, to my recollection. And um, they, had, they deliberated for long hours, uh, after which um, I think uh, President Obasanjo made a statement on behalf of the group. And so uh, if they are the people that the uh, intelligence services were referring to, I, abs I have absolutely no knowledge mm -hmm. of that. So, but that meeting did uh, take place by this group. Well, time will tell anyway. Mm -hmm. Now, let, let's move to other issues now. Okay. Uh, lately, we have seen a lot of uh, uh, communication from the presidency, a lot of uh, pressure on the president to speak against the backdrop of the fact that uh, his key officials are speaking up, some saying, alleging uh, usurpation of presidential powers. H how will you rate all this, considering that you have served uh, as a, a minister of information in the past? Uh, what do you think is missing or what do you think is present that is, is needed at this time in all this within the presidency? Well, um, so, you know, the, the times, context is very, very important. So I, I had the privilege of working with uh, President Obasanjo as Minister for Information, Minister for Communication, Minister for Youth Development, Minister for Intergovernmental Affairs. Um, but before I even speak to, before I respond to your question in the way if I understand it, I want to speak to the, the issue of public communication, mm -hmm. right? And the burden of responsibility that you have as uh, someone that is in public service at any point in time. One thing I learned very quickly in my time in government is that because you represent government, 
there is a huge burden of responsibility on you. Because you speak for government or you speak for the president, you must be mindful at all times about what you say, how you say it, and where you say it. And I believe that you must have full control of your personal emotions when you address Nigerian citizens on behalf of a government, on behalf of a president. It is extremely important. Because your responsibility or the responsibility of any government is to the entire country, to its entire citizens, and not to any section or group of people. I had no background in media. I had no background in journalism. But I learned on the job very quickly that you must be extremely careful about what you say. You must speak in a responsible manner. You must speak factually. You must speak respectfully to the Nigerian people. Left alone to me, you don't even have a choice, especially in a democracy. And if you're the president or the governor or any high official for that matter, the burden is even greater. As president, you must show statesmanship at all times. Your speech and your actions must be presidential. You must speak in a fatherly manner. You must speak in a way that inspires confidence. You must speak in a way that actually shows that you love your citizens, that you respect your citizens. You must speak in a way that shows that you have understanding that the only source of the mandate you have as president or as governor is from the people. You must also speak in a way that reflects that you understand democracy, that it does not matter who voted for you and who did not vote for you, that once the electoral process is over, you have a responsibility to the entire country. So public communication is very important. And unfortunately, in the last couple of months, we've been inundated with a lot of commentaries coming from high officials of government, which do not in any way reflect the, any understanding of the importance of public communication. Branding or profiling any group of people categorizing any group of people, deriding any group of people, making allusions to painful pasts. I think to my mind, most respectfully, I say it's most impolitic, most unpresidential, even reckless in some ways. So it's quite critical, very, very critical. Uh, leadership recruitment, part of uh, the qualities of a good leader is the public communication. It is uh, essential. Ha having sensibilities to uh, almost every uh, other thing. Quite complicated. Very, very complicated, mm -hmm. but not, not, not undoable. It mm -hmm. can be done. But you have to be mindful. You have to understand the responsibility that you bear as a leader. You must be mindful of it at all times. At all times, not even sometimes. And let me also add that, you see, it doesn't matter how grave a situation might be. Insofar as you have that responsibility to the public, you have to be mindful of your actions. Your actions, your words must be measured, must be calculated to, even if you can't do good, not to do any more harm than already exists. OK. Now, uh, what do you, how do you speak to the uh, green insecurity across the land? Uh, almost every part having one challenge or the other? It, 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 I mean, it, it's a very regrettable situation. Very regrettable situation. But it speaks to something. It speaks to a general sense of dissatisfaction all over the country. And so the insecurity and the expressions of, of dissatisfaction is not coming from one part of the country. It's coming from all over the country. And I think at this point, I'm going to take us back to the beginning of our conversation when we spoke about the terms of engagement, issues around our constitution, mm -hmm. the perennial and continuing uh, 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 problems. Uh, problems. It speaks to the fact that the constituent members of this country are yet to understand each other, are yet to appreciate each other, and that the constituent members of this country need to come together to really, really have a conversation on the terms of engagement. 
That way, we can begin to take responsibility for ourselves across the regions, across the states, across the local governments. This is my strong belief. And I believe that these the separatist agitations, the, 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 the very strong feelings of dissatisfaction, the rhetorics that you have going all over the place is just an expression of that dissatisfaction that is at the root of our engagement as a people and as a nation. And uh, like you said earlier, injustice are the base and to, 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 to the, the depends perhaps on the speed uh, with which we address those injustices, then uh, we may not summon this problem. It is critical. I mean, for me, I, 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 must, I, must, um, I, I, must, I must at this point, you know, really um, um, pay my deep respect to the various groups. They are, they are responsible, very patriotic groups all over the country, in the north, in the, the south, everywhere in the west, who are deeply concerned about the uh, deteriorating security situation and who are actually working very hard to ensure that groups come together that conversations uh, start, and that whatever is, 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 uh, is um, and in whichever way that uh, government can uh, be supported to arrest the situation that these things are done. So um, these things are ongoing, and it's, it's, a, it's a source of uh, comfort. Mm, source of comfort indeed. And 2023, uh, we made reference to it. Uh, very soon, heightened activities, politicking, underground meetings, already clamor and agitations for zoning, which group are not at to what will it bring into the current state of the nation? Uh, the struggle for 2023 and the state of the nation. Do you see any uh, link? Uh, will it heighten or will it help to douse the situation? Uh, well, um, I met you. Well, you and I know from experience that even in the best of times, right, uh, electoral cycles in our country have often come with a lot of um, um, conflicts, chaos, and um, a lot of horse trading here and there. So I do not think that 2023 will be any different. But I think your question is that given the uh, state of insecurity, uh, which is unprecedented in our country, that perhaps both will not be a combustible mm. uh, mix. Um, well, I wish I could, uh, I wish I could uh, see into the future. Uh, if I could, I would probably be a better place to respond mm. to that uh, question. But um, I mean, there is cause for concerns, right? Uh, I've heard people say that uh, there shouldn't be a 2023 elections. Mm. Uh, I've heard people say, look, it's going to be dangerous to do this. It will be unconstitutional. Well, Nigeria might be plunged into a constitutional crisis. Um, and I believe that all of these points, uh, these issues are valid. And, uh, but I also think that um, this is where statesmanship comes in. This is where, um, you know, uh, yeah, you know, uh, you know, where it, it the, just creates, it where creates, we need statesmen, it creates, not yeah, politicians. Statesmen, yeah, you know, we need statesmen. So this is an opportunity for uh, our political leadership across the institutions, our three arms of government, across the different chairs of government, to really come together to have a conversation, a thorough conversation on this, and the um, and agree the best way forward. Um, but I remain very hopeful that the insecurity in the country will be arrested. Um, I listened to the president's uh, June 12 speech, uh, very detailed, and um, one can only. Uh, hope that some of the uh, policy statements that were he, that he made will be followed up with uh, the right set of actions. It's very important. Mm. Uh, following them up, not just from the government, but from across board. Absolutely. Uh, it is time for people of uh, like minds, uh, people with positive outlooks to come mm. in mm. and seek a common solution to our common problem. Mm. Agreed. Completely agree. Mm. And that's why I keep saying that leadership and followership is shared responsibility. I'm not in any way trying to exculpate government from responsibility, neither will I exculpate citizens from responsibility. I mean, we've heard public officials who have said that, um, I remember, you know, I don't want to call names, but there was an uh, attribution to a, a current serving minister who once said that uh, the reason why uh, politicians do what they do is because uh, the people let them do it. Mm. Um, and that's a fact. It's, it's, it's just a fact. Mm. And so uh, the political class... Um, are clear that there are no consequences for uh, certain uh, kinds of actions. And therefore, there's no disincentive whatsoever for them to uh, act otherwise. And so, um, again, I cannot, I cannot stop emphasizing the importance of uh, citizen engagement in, uh, in the management of public affairs. Uh, and, and that me, gap, uh, we, we have not uh, done enough as it were. Absolutely. Uh, to and encourage the people to put them in that position to begin to play that role. Yeah, so, so it is through awareness. It is through constant awa awareness. 
we must do this. And it's not a responsibility of any particular group. And let me take this opportunity to come up with an initiative that is being, that we're pursuing, you know, the campaign has not started. And it's a campaign around what we call the Office of the Citizen, right? Just a, a campaign that will help the Nigerian citizen understand the power he or she has. That without this power, there can be no governor, there can be no president, there can be no minister, so to speak. That it is this voting power that you have that really, really gives you uh, 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 that power, right? And so, and that as a matter of fact, there's no political office that is more important, that is higher than the office of the citizen. It is a campaign that I, I would encourage political groups, uh, uh, NGOs, and uh, people who are interested in uh, the electoral process and the electoral space in good governance to really embrace and help to enlighten citizens all over Nigeria about the power they have through what we call the office of the citizen. I hope he succeeds, considering the improv uh, improvisation of uh, the populace, the popularization of the populace, the literacy level, uh, and the general downturn, uh, the, 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 this link between the people and the governance and the government. We believe we collectively we can uh, really work towards achieving uh, this. Uh, I hope it, it will come to pass. We're confident. Uh, we, it's not a walk in the park, but it is doable. And it is something that I believe that working together um, as groups and as individuals, we can achieve this. Thank you.